Hi guys, it's John here from Android Addicts, and this is a benchmark comparison test between the S22 Ultra and the S23 Ultra. So here we have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 and the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. So this is just a comparison between the two. I no longer have my Exynos 2200 that I had to go back to Samsung, so I can no longer compare that sadly. But we did see around the last sort of few months of the Exynos 2200, it was pretty much on par with the HN1, so it's a reasonable comparison to keep these going. So I've got these set up exactly the same as always, we're on 80% brightness and we're going to start with the Geekbench 6 test and we'll compare these to last month's results and see how they get on. Don't forget we've got the temperature widget floating in the top right here, HN1 is currently at 23, HN2 is currently at 22. So let's run the CPU test first. So don't forget these are both also charged up to 100% and we're going to run through the CPU benchmark three times, get an average, we'll do the same for the compute. Then we'll move on to Antutu and then 3D Mark. Okay, so here we are, the three CPU tests are finished and we can put the averages on the screen. So yeah, still a substantial difference. This has actually gone down the single core a lot more than it did last month. If we look at last month's averages as well, we can see that we have actually decreased on both. So the March update hasn't actually helped things. It's actually made things worse in terms of CPU. Let's move on to the compute test now anyway. We'll see how they're doing. They're both at 95% battery. 29 degrees and 30 degrees, so let's run these and see how they get on with the compute test. Okay, so the compute tests are finished and not much has changed actually since last month. Just a few points lost from both phones. You can see here the averages on the screen are actually 4627 and 9174 for the S23. Also temperature wise, we ended at 28 here on the S23 and 30 here on the 8 Gen 1. So it is still getting a bit warmer, the 8 Gen 1 compared to the 8 Gen 2. So just bear that in mind. Battery wise as well, we're still at 94% here on the S23 and we're at 92 on the S22 with the 8 Gen 1. Don't forget this has been in use for a year or so, so the battery will be slightly more deteriorated than the S23. Okay, so let's run a Antutu benchmark now and we'll see how they compare here to last month's scores. Hopefully we see some improvements. Okay, so the Antutu benchmark has finished here and the 8 Gen 2 obviously wins comfortably here with a score of 1.23 million. The 8 Gen 1 still getting a very respectable 914,000. You can see here the differences between the CPU and GPU scores are, are so great that the 8 Gen 2 blows the 8 Gen 1 out of the water. Yeah, very interesting test there. Obviously the 8 Gen 2 is a lot smoother, it's notably smoother than the 8 Gen 1 side by side. Now, whether you'd notice that in real life, you probably wouldn't because you're not going to have two phones side by side to compare. So let's move on to the stress test now, and we will obviously see how they do compared to last month. Now, last month they were very good on the 8 Gen 2. Wasn't very impressed with the 8 Gen 1 last month, but uh, we'll see if we get any similar sort of scores or results for the March update. So I'll leave this to run for 30 minutes, and I'll just skip to the end, and we'll see how they did. Okay, so the half hour test is just finished, and we can see very similar results to last month. S23 with the Gen 2 doing absolutely fantastically. We can see here uh, the lowest it gets to is around 70% here, just a couple of dips down to 70. But most of the time it's hovering at around 80 to 90% for most of the tests. So that's really fantastic news. Cores as well, absolutely fantastic. Locked at their respective speeds, so that's great to see. 8 Gen 1 looks very similar to last month, like I say, but uh, it does seem to be dipping quite a lot down to the sort of 45, 50% mark for the majority of the sort of middle of the test here. Picking back up to about 50, 55 towards the end. It did start okay-ish, I guess, around 70% around this first half, but then yeah, it just slowly sort of go downwards for the test. Cores as well, uh, doing the usual HN1 thing of going all over the place, but uh, it's still performing well, but obviously in comparison to the HN2, definitely not as well at all. 8 Gen 1 also still getting hotter and using up more battery than the 8 Gen 2, so that is a common theme here. So I will move on to the 3D Mark test now, and we're going to run the Wildlife Extreme Stress Test first and see how they do there. And again, we can have a look at how that compares to last month. Okay, and the Wildlife Extreme stress test is finished, and the lowest loop here on the HN1 is 1641, 
compared to the lowest of 2921 on the HN2. So massive difference here still between the old HN1 and the new HN2. Now compared to last month, the best loop on both has gone down slightly, but the lowest loop on the HN1 has actually increased by about 85 points or so. So not a massive difference again to write home about here in the March update. But yeah, obviously the HN2 is still massively outperforming the HN1. Let's move on to the Slingshot Extreme now and see how they fare here. Okay, so the slingshot's just finished, and interesting, we've actually seen some improvements here over last month, so that's good to see. So the HM1 has got 84 and 44 for graphics test 1 and 2, compared to last month, 66 and 39. HM2, 110 and 68 versus last month's 106 and 62, so big improvements there on both graphics tests. Now, physics scores are almost the same on the HM1 here with just a slight decrease from 73 to 70 this month. But the HN2 has actually seen improvements on all three tests. So last month we had 80, 56 and 30, and now we're at 114, 65 and 33. So definitely some improvements there for the HN2. So I hope you enjoyed this test. Please do let me know if you have any comments or questions down below. Let me know what scores you're getting in your tests. Have you seen any improvements this month? I can't say I've noticed anything particularly uh, using this as my sort of daily phone but uh, I still never have to charge the battery before the end of the day, which is fantastic. See here, ending on 52% and 56%. So really good for both phones there. But the HN2 with its better performance and better battery life is obviously the overall winner. So thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you again in the next video.